So um, I think we're going to transition you to the one crutch mm -hmm. or a cane. Mm -hmm. um, I think a cane would be nice. You mentioned to me that you like cool canes. So I met Cody about a year ago. Um, he came in with his mom, he's 14 years old, with the chief complaint of leg length discrepancy and also deformity. So his uh, right leg was about an inch and a half shorter than his left leg. Had been like that since birth. And typically what happens is as they get older, the actual leg length discrepancy increases in size. And originally when I met Cody, I was planning to do a lengthening of his femur using an external device, which is sort of the standard and has been the standard in child. While we were planning the surgery and while they were finding an optimal date, a new technology came onto the playing field, and that was the internal lengthening rod. It's called the precise nail. At first, we didn't really know about it. We didn't want to like be a guinea pig to a new surgery, but once we learned about it, it made it so much easier to buy into it because it's such a great uh, operation. And of course, you know, there was always a little caution when you have a new product, but it turns out this is a wonderful product that is a telescopic, um, intramedullary rod and can be used to lengthen the bone without uh, wearing an external fixator. And that's a huge thing. As much as the external fixator is great and has allowed us to do great lengthening, it's an external device and it's not so comfortable for patients. You can use a, a rod that goes into the marrow cavity. The rod itself is a telescopic rod and so it has the ability to expand cut the bone in the same way that we cut the bone with the traditional technique of external fixation, we have great control over the limb lengthening because we have an external magnet that is applied to the surface of the skin. That magnet communicates with a magnet that is inside the rod and that turns a, a mechanism that leads to the elongation of the rod and it works great. He said that it would be a, a complication later in life that the hip would get, like, get arthritis in it and arthritis you can never correct. So it seemed like to set your, you know, put your life aside for three months made it better in the long haul. See that spot in the rod? Yep. That little spot is the magnet inside the rod. Mm -hmm. And when we have to put the external magnet, we have to actually lay it right over that location. So what I've done in surgery is I've marked this location on your skin with a little Sharpie marker. There are a couple of really important things, and probably the first thing that um, everybody has to really pay attention to is magnet safety. This is a strong magnet. It's not like Magneto. It's not going to like pull your refrigerator across the room, but it's a strong magnet. And uh, if you have something magnetic 12 inches away, it'll actually pull it. And so if you, you know if you had a um, a uh, knife or something metal very close, it could pull it over and that could create a, a dangerous situation. So take my watch off for this? Right. So I think, I think it's really important to kind of create a, a magnet, uh, a, a metal free safety zone about two feet in all directions. I think you, you need to find a uh, particular point in the house that you do your treatments and you do it in that same spot all the time. You don't want to do this in the kitchen, and you don't want to leave the magnet sitting on the kitchen table. And that'll be, you know, you sort of have a system for it. You should get rid of watches. I'm going to take my watch off. You should get rid of um, credit cards. Um, if you have a relative who has a pacemaker, to keep them away, because magnets can affect all of those things. So get rid of the metal objects, and, and then you're good to go. Here, why don't you hold on to that? So how much does that weigh? Uh, let's say about three pounds. Okay, so it's not real heavy. Now, the, the, the magnet is basically centered directly over that spot. And what I did is I made this little mark on your skin so that you know exactly how to hold it. It's important that the magnet is oriented down towards the feet, okay? It's always oriented down towards the feet, mm -hmm. okay? The, um, the other thing that's really important is you don't want to have the magnet askew. You don't want to have it pointing in, in an off direction. It should be collinear with the leg mm -hmm. because the magnet will interact best in that direction. The other thing is the magnet um, has a depth of penetration that's about three inches. Mm -hmm. So 
it's really important, you know, if, if we're using it on the leg bone, which is very thin, then there's no problem. But when we're using it on the thigh, especially on a muscular guy like you, you want to make sure that you put a little pressure on it so that you kind of get it closer to the bone, which is in the center of the leg. It takes about seven minutes to do a millimeter. And what we want to do is have you do a third of a millimeter three times per day. Mm -hmm. So it's, seven, it's a seven minute uh, treatment divided in three. So it's like two minutes and 20 seconds. And it'll take that amount of time to do a third of a millimeter, and then it will automatically shut off. Mm -hmm. It's really important that when you do the treatment, you do it regularly and space it out nicely. Uh -huh. So what you want to do is you want to do it first thing in the morning, you want to do it in the middle of the day, and you want to do it at the end of the day. And so what you're hearing is the rotation of the magnet, okay? And what you're actually seeing in real time is how much lengthening is happening right there and there. So it is, it's gradually happening, and over the course of two minutes and 20 seconds, it'll achieve a third of a millimeter. You feel any pain? Nope, I feel any pain. Right. Maintain the, a little bit of pressure on it, and you're good to go. He's great with my parents still, you know, he talks to me in ways that I can understand. He makes a, well, I, I had a sickness in the hospital and he came in, checked on me. Not a lot of doctors would do that, so it was a great experience because of him mostly. Cody is a really outgoing, very mature teenager because I was able to present the, the nuts and bolts of this treatment in such a way that it just wasn't that onerous. And I said, listen, Cody. We're gonna do an operation, we're gonna do it through some small incisions, I'm gonna cut the bone, I'm gonna stabilize it with a rod. You're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to elongate the leg by doing this treatment. You're gonna be on crutches for three months. I told him that the elongation will take about six weeks and that the additional healing will take another six weeks and by then I will most likely be able to get you off crutches. And as it turns out, today is just about three months since my initial surgery of him. And in fact, it has gone exactly like it was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. So you got full extension of your knee. Bend your knee. And you got really, really nice flexion. Flexion of about 130 degrees. That's a huge advantage over the uh, the external device. Mm -hmm. it is with the external fixators, we used to find people really got stiffness of the knee. And you've really been able to maintain that knee mobility. Mm -hmm. See this really, really nice column of bone bridging there and there. And you're starting to lose the detail of the gap because that gap is no longer a space, it's really filled in with new bone. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to this point, it has the structural integrity to allow you to really start putting weight on it. And that's why today is really the first time I'm letting you put weight on it. How long will it take for running? Probably about another six to eight weeks until the bone is really healed solidly enough that I'd let you really do everything. That would be the full, full activity? Full activity. Okay. I've done this procedure on many patients at this point and I have been very, very impressed with the reliability and the predictability of the uh, precise nail.